guys. I've got something interesting to share with you today. Not arcade related, but film related. As you know, I collect movies, and I'm going to share with you something special. This is the last theatrical Popeye cartoon released in 1958 called Spooky Swabs. Then Paramount never ran any more of these in the movie theater. Never again. I can hear the Czechs hockey down there playing. Can you hear that? <laughs> what makes this so special is that somebody at Paramount was asleep at the switch and it fell in the public domain. So today I can run it for you on YouTube and there's no copyright claim anymore. But here's what else is rather unusual. I want to tell you a little bit about Popeye. The cartoon started in 33, Max Fleischer. Max Fleischer made a bunch of them, 33 to like 42. Then Paramount fired them. Now, a lot of people argue that the Fleischer Popeyes were the best. Uh, all black and white, except three double length cartoons, three 18 minute cartoons in full three strip Technicolor. And they were a lot of fun. Then Paramount Studios, after they fired the Fleischers, proceeded to make 125 of these theater cartoons. I think that was pretty correct, and, and this is the last one. With the Paramount logo under their famous Studios title, right there. Then they were sold in a TV package to AAP. There's their logo. A lot of us growing up saw those logos on TV. They hacked off the Paramount logo and put that title on the front. Released a ton of them, okay? And then the King Features Syndicate came up with 200, I think, over 200 TV Popeyes called Popeye the Sailor. <clears throat> they were only five minutes long, where these were six and seven minutes. And of course the animation was very stilted and such, but it turned Popeye into a thing for all of us kids growing up. Some of us didn't know really know much about the difference except Popeye's nemesis was Bluto from 1933 until 1960 and King Features said the Paramount had the copyright on the word Bluto and they changed it to Brutus. So from 60 and on they were Brutus. But guess what? Jack Mercer was the voice of Popeye from the very beginning until the very end. And we're talking about the 90s. They were making Popeye cartoons. And guess what else? May Kestel. She was olive oil the whole time. Okay? Olive oil. She did the, all those years. And a few years that Jack was in the army, she actually did Popeye for a couple of cartoons. His voice, too. She was very gifted. Now, you remember her as the character of Aunt Bethany. Do you know who that is? Christmas Vacation. Is this the airport, Claude? We're here! Oh, that was fun. I love riding in cars. That's her. That's olive oil. And a whole bunch of other voices. She did Betty Boop, every single Betty Boop episode. Now, this particular cartoon print has one other special thing about it. <clears throat> it's in a process called Ansco Chrome. It was filmed in Technicolor. Kirk, can you come in close? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see mm -hmm. the word Ansco Chrome, whether that's going to focus too well. But on the sprockets is a color process, ANSCO. This was printed in the 50s, the late 50s, early 60s. This color has held up the earlier, the 40s ANSCO chrome didn't. Obviously this was printed after 58 because that's when the cartoon came out. But what makes this unusual is that it's not only an ANSCO chrome, the color is not faded like Kodachrome, but that the credit on the screen was still Technicolor. Nobody really knows. This could have been a print made for the Army, Army, Navy. They used to have 16 millimeter depots. Uh, it could have been made for 
uh, rental lab, uh, libraries that were renting out 16 millimeter. See, in the movie theaters, it's 35 millimeters, the wide film. But what a pain in the ass that is to work with. So we prefer this. But if you look here, too, you can see the, the green is very vibrant. Okay, this is, this is a very cluttered splicing desk, isn't it? I'm still going, I have so many cartoons. I have hundreds of cartoons. Am I ever going to get to them all? I've got so many films. I've got boxes of them. But we're still running them here in the projectors here. So these are still entertaining hundreds of people um, uh, in our parties. And uh, maybe you'll have a party here. Are you ready now to see this? Let's put it on the machine. Okay, we have it up there ready to start. And let's give it a go. Thank you. 
copyright issue either. Isn't that nice? <laughs> yes, it was. It's it's not one of the better ones. And Bluto wasn't in it either. Can you imagine he didn't appear in the very last episode? And neither did Wimpy. And neither did Sweet Pea for that matter. Just Popeye and Olive Oil. You're in all the episodes, Wimpy. I'm in all the episodes. <laughs> but did you notice the ghosts were a lot like the Casper ghosts? Not Casper, but the nemesis there, his uh, brothers and, and cousins and things. Are you up there? Yes, we are. All right, I gotta go. I'll see you in the morning. Okay, baby. Thanks. Gonna thank your pizza. Thank you. Okay. He thanked me for the pizza. Yeah, we're up here. You can take it down. Ah! You can't say that in my videos. So we have a lot of fun here. Oh, man. Yes, I, I played the cartoon was up there a few days ago. Don't you have to mention this is somebody? filmed out of order. Yes, I want to tell you, Jerry Beck, a friend of mine, put together the Popeye show, and he was able to reassemble the original logos and things in the early 2000s, thank goodness. So we were able to put a lot of these back together so you could see the original format how they were released to the theaters and uh, the brilliant color so it's another thing that we're losing here folks 16 millimeter but a lot of a lot of very healthy collectors out there still buying and selling and maybe you will too anyway at the end of this video I've linked up some other 16 millimeter films we sold over the years take a peek thanks for watching Good night.